So this week's Hawaiian Volcano Summary, you guys are seeing on screen an image of the thermal camera from Kilauea, courtesy of the USGS HBO. And this is what the infrared or the, th the thermals look like for the last week or so, right? Only a little bit of glow coming from the West Event Complex. That's down in here. But the area that had that most recent lava lake, that West Basin right over here, is all the way cooled off. It hasn't really shown much change, and there's not much uh, to show you visually for the last week. We can show you is this is the GPS distance north to south across the caldera. This is for the whole last year. So we really want to focus in on this very last part here on the right. And when this line is going up, it's showing the caldera wall north and south getting further apart. And what you can see is that it's been been doing that for this is about the last you know, couple months or so now, or maybe the last month or so maybe. So yeah, a couple months or so, a month and a half. So what you can see is that the underground adjustment of the volcano the volcano is stretching out right it's uh stretching out north to south and it seems like on the south side might be rising a little bit when we go and look at the the detailed data there so the gps catches a deeper signal all the time uh, the tilt meter doesn't always however the tilt meter for the last month shown here is also showing this commensurate increase in tilt it's hard to tell as easily because you have a lot of these deflation inflation cycles that are part of the background um, movement of magma within a volcano. So within here we had this this uh, larger inflationary signal that led to a small intrusion event. Um, but the overall pattern is that despite all of that, the baseline seems to have come up and is higher now than before. So both in the shallow regions and in the deeper regions as shown in GPS, we're seeing the volcano filling underground. And here are the earthquake counts for the last month. You see in that same period of time where the tilt had gone upwards and the baselines increased right through here these last couple of weeks, you can see that our average earthquakes per day, which is what we're looking at here on the left, might be somewhere around 50 or so, somewhere in there, right? Sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower. The previous two weeks before that might have been half that rate. We'll draw it at 25 right in here. You can see how that's more or less that baseline prior to the, the, the pausing of the volcano there. So this is really showing that the pressure is building underground. It hasn't quite spiked uh, to levels where it might lead to a surface breakup, but that could happen fairly quickly. And so this is the most important combined signal here, is the, the, the ground movement and the earthquakes together. However, because on the surface the volcano has paused for some time now, uh, the USGS has accordingly lowered the alert level from watch to advisory and color code for aviation from orange to yellow. And, but noting that seismicity and deformation patterns remain unsettled. Resumption of activity may occur in the near future with little or no warning. Potential remains for, this, for resumption of this eruption or initiation of a new eruption at or near the summit of Kilauea. So that is a long and short of Kilauea. Mauna Loa, we don't have any imagery to show you, but this is the tilt plot for the last month. You can see that it also looks like it's showing some inflation as well. And this is normal for the post-eruptive um, pattern on Mauna Loa. So that's to be normal. Um, if we look at the earthquakes, however, here's earthquakes per day once again. This is now up top of the plot here is nine and this is zero. So you can see that some days there are no earthquakes at all in that summer region of Mauna Loa. And some days you might get up to well, less than 10 no matter what. So a lot different story than Kilauea. Even though you have the inflation, you don't have any of the earthquakes. That's the big difference there. If we zoom out in Mauna Loa for the last year, that what we were just now looking at this zoomed in section right in here. So we're really in a background level following the eruption, which was this big signal. Uh, really right in here was the eruption signal, and this was the buildup to the eruption that came a few months beforehand. So even compared to a year ago, you can see we're at much lower background levels, and Mauna Loa thus is, is normally quiet. So with the earthquakes on the screen, start with our recent earthquake scenes that just happened, kind of threw us off a little bit as getting ready for the live to come on, and suddenly the desk starts shaking here. All right, so here's our most recent earthquake. It's on the south side of the rift zone uh, on Mauna Loa, and there it is in red. Preliminary 4.1 is being set at a depth of four kilometers. So it's essentially this kind of south flank of Mauna Loa that is still adjusting to the, the eruption site here. And what we've seen in recent data is that most of that inflation is happening mostly around the summit here, and the, the rift zone has been generally deflating. Um, so it's not like it's not moving, it's just... Uh, 
moving in opposite from the summit since the magma came from the summit, went to the rift zone, and then erupted out of there. So the rift zone is kind of sagging, whereas it's recharging underneath the summit once again. So without knowing exactly um, the dynamics there, having these earthquakes on the flank is interesting. I mean, we're, we know magma is coming at the summit and it's pushing the volcano around, and it also will have a chance to to adjust, right? So um, we'll see what this ends up revised at. 4.1 is certainly um, something to be aware of. Looks like there's a secondary 1.9 popped up there as well. And here earlier today was at 2.5 in that similar area. So a little bit of earthquakes coming up here. Uh, when we're looking at that earthquake plot of Mauna Loa, we're really mapping out this area right around the summit in here or so. Right, so these are not considered as much of that signal for the summit. It's still interesting as, since we know that the south flank of both Mauna Loa and Kilauea do uh, play a big, big important part in how the volcano can recharge and where the magma goes inside of it as it does so.